Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this week's Friday Reads where I talk about everything I read in the last week, what I'm currently in the middle of, and what I think I'm going to be getting to next week. And I actually read so much last week so we have a ton to talk about. So we're just going to jump right in with the very first thing that I finished which was Once Broken Faith by Shauna McGuire, the 10th book in the October Day series, which is an adult urban fantasy series that follows our main character of Toby Day. And she is half human, half fae, a knight in the fairy realms, and she gets thrown at these really weird problems in fairy because, like, she just is the best best suited to solve those problems. And in this one, she is at a conclave of kings and queens to discuss the ramifications from what happened at the end of the previous book and then one of the kings is killed and Toby must investigate before anybody else dies. And I this I said this last week but this is probably one of my like honestly one of my favorite books. It's not it doesn't have necessarily a ton of reveals or anything. It's just a really nicely written book in the middle of a series that I really enjoy. We get to have some of the political machinations because that is what Toby is observing to some extent, but we don't have to watch Toby flail through political machinations that she just is not well suited to. Um, I actually also really appreciate one of the lines in here, which is basically like she is well aware that she sucks at her at certain aspects of her job, but then she looks at like the pureblood Fay and is just like, oh, but I'm miles ahead of them, so that's why I keep having to deal with some of this stuff. And I just really appreciated that. Um, definitely like the last hundred pages are nonstop in this book. And I just generally like some of the reveals that we get at the end with Toby kind of, uh, coming, like she kind of knew some stuff about herself, but this is where it feels like she's really, truly verbalizing it out loud for the first time. And it's, it's really interesting and is setting up some some interesting dynamics going forward. So yes, I really enjoyed it and I ended up giving it four and a half stars. And then after that, I did pick up The Verifiers by Jane Peck. And this is a adult contemporary murder mystery where we're following our main character of Claudia. And Claudia was just recently hired by an agency called Verifi The Verifiers? Something I don't remember exactly the company name, but the whole idea is that clients come to this company and pay the company to basically verify a person's romantic online profile, make sure, you know, sniff them out, make sure that they're not lying kind of thing. And so Claudia has just been hired for this and has been in training and now she's starting to actually be able to take on some of these cases for herself. Um, and then I guess at some point there's like one of the clients or people she's verifying maybe goes missing and she decides to investigate. Um, I didn't get that far. I DNF'd this book at 50 pages. It really just wasn't working for me in part because of the writing style. There was, there were multiple sentences that I just found so ambiguously written that I have no idea what they were trying to say, which I really hate. <laughs> that is not my deal. Um, I also didn't like any of the characters, including Cla Claudia herself. I don't think Claudia is terrible, but she does feel very young. And I think she's like maybe early to mid twenties, but she felt pretty young to me. And I was just like, I'm not into it. Um, a lot of the other characters, like I actively disliked, including Claudia's boss. Uh, I also hated that, like, there was this weird dynamic with the job where she clearly has been getting training, but we don't know what that training entails. And then she's given this, like these, some assignments, like, oh, even you couldn't mess this up, which is I'm like, that's a crappy way for your boss to be talking to you. Um, and then like Claudia really wants to be part of like, uh, she really wants this to kind of be like a murder mystery novel. So she's doing more than she should essentially. And then her boss reprimands her and is like, oh, you did screw it up. And I'm like, okay, but what training did she get? We don't actually know because Claudia doesn't say what she's been trained in. And like, we don't see the training on page. And so I'm just like, anyway, it was just a bunch of dynamics that I was like really, really not into. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll give it a little bit longer to kind of settle. But I put the book down and I never wanted to put it, pick it back up. So I just went ahead and DNF'd it. 
And then after that, I went ahead and picked up the Mo Murders of Molly Southbourne by Tade Tom Thompson. And I know that I'm mispronouncing that first name. I just haven't been able to figure out how to actually pronounce it. Like I've looked and I just haven't found it yet. So I'm going to continue to look. Um, but this is the first book in a horror novella series. And essentially Molly Southbourne, anytime she bleeds, a copy of her is made that then tries to kill her. So she has to dispatch, like she has to kill off herself before they try to kill her, before they kill her. Anyway, that's about as much as I can give because it is a novella and so I don't want to spoil anything. And this is really interesting. I found that that concept was very, I just, I adore that concept in general. Mostly I like how it was executed. Um, I, and it's hard because like, it's kind of horror, kind of speculative. Um, and it, it, it's very definitely writing that line in a way that I'm not sure I totally totally agree with because there's some conventions with horror and there's some conventions with science fiction. And like, if we're going like speculative, more science fiction-y, then like some of the world building stuff, for example, needed to be fleshed out a little bit more. But if it's more horror, then like, it's kind of okay. Um, but like, it, I, I don't know. I didn't feel comfortable with the amount of world building we got. Like I had so many questions and they didn't there's some, a lot of stuff that just didn't make sense. So I don't know. Um, and, but if it were like fully horror, like really truly into horror, then I might be more accepting of that kind of world building, like that lacking in the world building. I don't know. The character of Molly Southbourne, I didn't necessarily love her characterization either. We didn't get a ton of her. I don't feel really like I knew who Molly was as a person, which I'm not expecting in-depth exploration of her character from a novella and a short novella at that. It's like 117 pages ish. So I'm not expecting like in-depth exploration, but I am expecting to like have some idea of who this person is. And I don't really feel like I got that, but it's like, it's one of those weird things where even though I had those gripes and I noticed those things as I was reading it, I still really enjoyed it because this is such an interesting idea and there were a number of interesting things being said. So in the end, I gave this four stars um, and I'm definitely going to continue on with this novella series, but I do think that there are some things that could have been done better. And then after that, I did finish Crown Duel by Sherwood Smith, which is a YA fantasy book in which we are following our main character of Mel. And Mel is um, the daughter of a count and the and a count. He, in the very first part of the book, he dies and is basically like with his, his dying wish is that Mel and her brother stop the king from breaking this covenant. And so Mel decide, Mel and her brother promise, and they decide to basically go after the king to try to get him to not break this covenant. And, and she's doing this even though she knows she doesn't have the training and she doesn't have the manpower, and this is potentially a war that she could never win. And the story kind of goes from there. And like I said last time, this is a little bit bittersweet because this is one of my favorite books from when I was a kid and it's just, it's not as good anymore. Partially because I've read it so many times that I was like, oh yeah, this part, it's a little bit boring. Um, in part because, also in part because like, it was never my favorite kind of story anyway, like with the fighting and kind of even how, so, some of how it's executed. I just wanted a few more details, which it was written in a style that was very much in keeping with the time. However, I really wanted more kind of thing. Um, but also because I really struggle with Mel as a character in this first book because she's ignorant and brash and she jumps to like the worst possible conclusions about certain people every single time. So a lot of the kind of issues that I have with YA in general. And I've mentioned this before on my channel, but like part of the reason that I have problems with that kind of a character 
isn't necessarily because that's untrue to teenagers, but because it's super true. And I have an 11 year old who is starting to do some of those things. And I'm like, I read for escapism. And so I don't really want it to mirror what I'm dealing with in real life. And so I just have a little bit less patience for that kind of character. Now, the nice thing is at the very end of this book, Mel has an epiphany that this is what she's been doing and she needs to be better. She needs to like learn a few things. Like she, she's, she realizes she's ignorant. She takes, she starts taking the steps to correct it. And it's not an overnight thing, but like she's making the first steps. So it's, it's still a pretty good book and I would definitely recommend it for like kids and adults who like YA. It's still really good. It's just not necessarily for me anymore. And I ended up giving it three and a half stars. And then the last thing I finished in the last week is Seven of Infinities by Elliot de Bodard. And this is a Shuya Universe novella. So the Shuya Universe no Shuya Universe is really interesting. It's like science fiction, um, like way in the future. It is very heavily based on Vietnamese culture and which is actually really refreshing to see. Um, the and so like in there it's it's a really hard kind of world to describe, but basically, you know, very future um, Vietnamese kind of culture. There's these mind ships. It's, it's really, really interesting. But in this book, we're following our main character of Van, who is a teacher and she like kind of like a tutor, half tutor, half teacher, um, to a young girl. But then there is an older, like a lady that kind of comes to visit the student and then very promptly like dies in the habitat. And so Van is decides with the help of a mind ship to investigate this death. And the story kind of goes from there. And I really liked this. I thought that this is a really good one. I think that this might actually be a good one to start with if you're new to the Shuya universe, just because even though it doesn't describe a lot of like the background world building information, I think it gives enough to kind of get you through it. And I don't know that all of the one, all of these novellas have done that in the past, but I thought it was great. I really liked the character of Van. I really liked the mind ship, Sunless Woods. I just general, I think I liked like most of the characters. I liked watching them interact. I thought it was an interesting story. However, the plot is a little bit difficult to follow at times. So I think it could have been done a little bit better. But overall, I still really enjoyed reading this. And when I got to the end, it was just like, yay. Um, not just with like, like with some of the conclusions to the character arcs, as well as the conclusion to the murder mystery. So yeah, I really enjoyed this and I ended up giving it 4.25 stars. So now what am I in the middle of? And the answer is so many things. <laughs> so, um, first up, I did go ahead and pick up the second book in this duology, this bind up, um, and that is court duel. And so it's following we're it's, again, it's a YA fantasy. We're following our main character of Mel, who is now going to court to determine basically who of the two candidates who is best suited to be the new king. And the story kind of goes from there. I, anything else about the description would be a spoiler, but that's the very basic idea. And I... I don't actually know. I'm about a hundred pages into this, this book and it's like only about 250. So I'm a decent way in. Um, and yes, I love the second book so much more. <laughs> I love watching Mel kind of learn how to navigate court and attack problems in a way that the court hasn't seen before. And like, honestly, I really kind of Yes, it, the second book is definitely my favorite. It is absolutely holding up thus far, and I am enjoying it so, so much. And then I also picked up 
The Green Witch by Erin Murphy Hiscock. And so it's The Green Witch, your complete guide to the natural magic of herbs, flowers, essential oils, and more. And this is, I'm on page 80. And, which is uh, maybe a third of the way through. So I picked this up because, predominantly because, like, I definitely would like to get into a practice of some kind, something, something spiritual without necessarily going the religious route. Um, I, I'm not necessarily going to want to go to religion for my spiritual needs. So I was reading this in the hopes that it might give me some ideas of how to go about having a spiritual practice without necessarily being religious. And I'm having a little bit of a mixed time with this book. There are definitely some things that I very much connect to. I very much am getting, getting good ideas from. And then there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't agree with. And, um, what I will say, if you're eyeballing this book at all and thinking maybe you want to pick it up because it doesn't have that religious aspect, what I will say is that it does ask you, it doesn't necessarily ask you to believe in, but it contains a lot of, um, material about like the energy of things. And it very much subscribes to this belief that everybody has an energy, like plants have an energy, places, the earth, everything, and that you can, if you try, like see it, like there's a, there's an exercise in here where it's like, okay, so sit down next to a plant and like, you know, ground yourself and then reach out and don't touch the plant if you don't know what it is. But like reach out to the plant and basically imagine your energy welling up and reaching out to touch the energy of the plant and allow the plant to basically tell you about itself. And like, I'm not, I'm going to be really clear. Like, I'm not saying anything negative against people that do believe that but I don't. And so having a lot of references to those kinds of things are making it, it, it's, it's making it so that I'm not getting as much out of this book as I was originally hoping for. So I'm still going to proceed on because there are some things that are good and that I am enjoying, but I, I, it's a little disappointing because I was hoping for something a little bit different than this. And then I also picked up Seasonal Fears by Shauna McGuire, the second book in the Al Alchemical Journals series, which is a companion. So it's a companion novel to Middle Game. And I don't know a ton about what this book is about other than we're tackling like the seasons, the embodiment of the seasons rather than the embodiment of um, language and math, which is what we had in the first book. Um, I... <laughs> I can't tell you what it's about because I can never remember because these books are so like the descriptions are so, so cerebral. Um, and I'm only six pages in, so I'm not terribly far in. Uh, this is a book that I'm really excited to get to because I did enjoy middle game and I kind of have better expectations about what this book is going to be than I think a lot of people had going into this one. Um, and so knowing from, Sha okay, I don't remember what she said, but Shauna McGuire gave a description of this book and I was like, okay, that sounds good. And I remember that it's very different than what Middle Game was. So like, I'm, I'm excited because I think I have probably better expectations and I know that it's something that I'm still very much likely to enjoy. Um, but yeah, only six pages in, so I don't have a ton of things to say. And the other, the last book that I'm in the middle of, because apparently I'm in the middle of all the books, um, I have picked up Ruby Fever by Alona Andrews, the sixth book in the Hidden Legacy series. I got it. I have it in my hands. I get to start reading it. I'm trying to not just sit down and read this book because I am trying to read the other books for um, the Magical Readathon. But like when this came in, I very definitely had like a huge headache and was in such a bad mood. So I was like, I'm going to read one chapter. And I did. I'm only on page 16. And I felt so happy reading that chapter. So this is definitely going to be more like a reward. I get to read this as like I finish other things. But I'm trying to be very disciplined and not read this until I finish the other books for the magical readathon. But I am in the middle of it and like so, so excited about it. So, uh, that's everything that I'm in the middle of, like I said, 
like four books is kind of a lot for me. So what am I going to be picking up next week? I very definitely want to finish Court Duel. That should be like not difficult at all because I'm very much enjoying it. I do want to finish Seasonal Fears, of course, and then continue on with both Ruby Fever and The Green Witch, although neither of these have any kind of deadline. And then if I'm feeling up to it and I finish all the other things, I would like to get to The Tropic of Serpents by Marie Brennan because this is the last book that I need for the magical readathon. Um, so I would preferably like to get to this before the end of August, although I don't think I'm going to because I have too many other things to read. And then the other thing that I do want to try to pick up is The Brightest Fell by Shauna McGuire, which is the 11th book in the October Day series, because my buddy is already reading this and I haven't even started it. So those are all the things that I have read, what I'm in the middle of, what I think I'm going to be getting to next so many books <laughs> that did so many books but if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of the of the books that I talked about in this video please leave me a comment down below but that is it so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to and until next time have happy reading and I will see you in my next video bye